Right, so the Metla grill has arrived to put on here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this part, these long bars with the top part off, measure the grill, cut it, fit it to these two bars or lay on these two bars. We figure it out as we go along. So we've been working out a layout for the roof rack and as you can see just there we've managed to get it all sorted or roughly how I think it should go. So you've got two fuel cans there, you've got two water cans there, just in front of that you've got their metal uh, military box and just in front of that which you can't see at the moment is going to be the spare wheel and there's the spare wheel. Now they're going to have two spare wheels so we're going to try and give them the option here to hold these down to the grill or to the base of this, I think we're just going to use ratchet straps. Um, I might actually put a, a threaded rod through there. I'm still undecided. I hate this indecision that I keep getting. It's all about thinking and making it easier for them. Right, what I need to do, I need to drill four holes in the bottom of this. Possibly even six actually to secure it. I've drilled the six holes in the bottom now, and we can bolt that to the bottom of the cage here. I've got to take all the bars off now, clean them all up and get them ready for painting. There you go, we're taking it all inside now to be painted. Right, one other job that I've got to do to this a G, a gila, a gila. Tell you what, I don't know if it's called a gila or a gila. Do you know that completely confused me? But anyway, whoever knows what it is, sort of let me know because do you, do you pronounce the G as a G, a gila, or just pronounce it as a G, giga? I don't know. Anyway, I'm waffling. Anyway, on the front of the roof rack, let me pan you round. As you can see there, their ears over there, just there, is a light bar set on the front of the roof rack. So what I need to do is drill a hole in the roof so we can run a wire down, down into the front of the vehicle. This is the wiring loom that comes with it for the switch. <laughs> need to get grommets put in there. So I keep just a few packs of grommets. This is the bit when you don't wish you had fat hands like I've got. So there you go. That's the wire through and there's a grommet on there as well to stop that wire being cut. 
And the next job is to get the cable through this. It's a solar wire gland. Just to give you an update, I've decided to gaffer tape that down until that seals and dries and cures. We now have the light bar switch on top of the dash just there, or on top of the steering column, and it's wired underneath the bonnet just here. So you've got your negative there and your positive there, and it goes through um the same big rub grommet that that split charge relay wire goes through and all the wiring is tucked down behind here including your the fuse the relay the fuse is there we've yet to put that in and the only reason we haven't is because we have bare wires on the roof so until we've actually got the light bar wired up the fuse will stay out so now we're on to actually painting the roof rack and getting some Primer down on it. You've seen me paint that, you've seen me paint the bus. Well, you would have done by now. Pretty sure, sure that video has gone out. Yep, it has. So we painted these bars. I've got the roof rack and the box to paint. I'm not going to show you that because I'm going to bore you to tears. Just keep doing that. Anyway, as soon as we painted it, we start putting it back together. Get the light bar on. We're nearly finished then, so it's going to look really cool. We've got to go and get some ratchet straps and ratchet strap the stuff down. But once we've I mean, just literally putting it together now. Once I've sprayed it all up, we start videoing again. Once we start bolting it all back on and start making it take shape, we've got to put some sides on it. There you go, so the roof rack and the actual roof bars, everything has all had its first coat of primer, or should I say two coats of primer. As you can see, it's still very wet because um, it's a matte black primer. Hi, right, welcome back to the workshop. Excuse the noise, we've got the heater on. It is quite noisy because it's a diesel sort of jet type thing and let me see if you can see it. Just about there. Look at that. Blowing red hot. Trying to dry the paintwork on the roof rack here. But we're getting there. So what we're doing at the moment is dry, but I want to make sure it's rock solid. So a bit of heat on it, harden it up. Again, someone's going to tell me if I'm right or wrong, but it is military paint, and I know they bake these things anyway. So, what I'm doing now is I'm putting on those ratchet straps on this roof rack. some um, hasps and padlocks on there. Right, so we're using Smith & Lock hasp 
and I've had one of these circular ones. Anyway, available from Screwfix, I'll leave a link in the description below. Any questions about these, stick it in the comments. Right, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's absolutely, it's raining, it's that fine rain that makes you wet. Rain makes you wet, you might know, but it's that fine rain, it's horrible stuff. You're not getting soaked with. So I've got the worst job at the moment, putting the rails back on there. And getting wet while I'm doing it. So, I'm going to bring you along for a ride, probably speed this up a little bit because it's going to take a little bit of time. And you'll want to see what's going on. So what I've decided to do is put the original nuts back on, then nylock nuts on top of that. Just to double secure it, really. And I feel a lot happier doing that. So there you go, that's literally all we've got time for on this. Let me show you the roof rack quickly, so you can have a quick sneak peek of that. And the next time you will see this, when it's all put together. I would show you me put it all together, but do you know what? You've seen it as it is. Now I wanna show you when it's completed. It's on there. Absolute legend, man. Oh, Obviously, you're going to be there, isn't it? We want to catch what you get outside. Yeah. Oh, no way. Oh, that's so that's good. That's incredible. <laughs> right, okay, as you just saw, the reaction from Alex and Doug as they drove in and saw the car. I purposely put the vehicle there for that reason, and I luckily got them on the camera. Anyway, so they've just set the car up so we can have a proper tour around the vehicle. I'm going to keep my gob shut <laughs> because. They, can, they know more about this car than I think Vox will probably do. Um, all I know is they're made up with a roof rack. That's, that, that's it for me. You know, that's all I'm happy about. But what I want them to do is explain this car from back to front because it is amazing, the actual conversion. I just, it's, 
something so small and the conversion is so good. So here they both are. Hi you guys. Oh yeah. Hey. <laughs> so you're a bit made up with a roof rack. Oh my oh, god, it's incredible. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's bigger than That's the a bit of reaction I'd even expected. <laughs> I just never... what I want you to do is explain a little bit about the conversion, how it works. because um, I know you've said to me that you've obviously seen people do camping getting soaking wet. You want to save a little bit of money, obviously it's put towards more of the charities um, by sleeping in your own little camper conversion. So I want us, I want you to sort of go through the whole conversion with us, showing us exactly what, where, how you sleep, which is, I think everybody's <laughs> going to be asking that question. Six foot two and he can sleep in with all doors, all windows shut. <laughs> Do you know, I still can't get my head around that, but it, you know, I, I've seen it, it's, you know, he does. So if we go to the car and you explain everything, I'm going to let you do all the talking. I'm going to stay out of the shot and let you do everything and say everything about the car because you know it. I would say she's uh, nice and tidy looking for now, hopefully. Yeah, um, won't be like this on the rally, but um, yeah, we'll have a lot more stuff in it. So when we started off with a 1.2 2003 uh, Voxel Aguila, um, just because we had to have a basically uh, a car that your granny would drive. We, that was the rules of the rally. We had to buy one. We chose one, the boxiest one we could, because we wanted to turn it into a camper, as Carl just said. We wanted to turn it to this camper so we could uh, sleep inside, hopefully not get eaten alive by mosquitoes, and uh, you know just potentially stay a bit warmer on the nights uh, when it's uh, clear skies in the desert. Um, so we started off, got the car. I picked it up from uh, I think it was Preston. We went all the way up to Preston on a train, picked it up, and uh, went to fill it up with fuel. First thing that I did when I filled it up with fuel was all the fuel poured out over the rear tire because the uh, fuel pipe had rusted through. So it was um, <laughs> it was a good start, but 50,000 miles on the clock and one family had owned it from, from new. It was in beautiful nick really, other than being salmon pink and faded and with a rotten fuel pipe, it was in a good condition. So we, uh, we thought right. perfect, perfect uh, canvas to start with. Yeah, so the first job was to fix that fuel pipe, which we did pretty quickly because we were losing fuel, as Steph said. <laughs> and then we stripped out the back seats. Um, so originally it was a five-seater, and now it's a permanent to strip everything from the front seats out uh, to the back, uh, back to bare metal. Oh, yeah. And then insulated it um, and carpeted the walls um, as well, just to make it a bit neater. Um, and then we built up from the bottom and we had to sort of build platforms to make sure that we had level surfaces and then went from there really. It was we? quite a challenge because yeah. uh, nothing in this car is even on either side. So um, you've got a wheel arch this side, which is a different shape to the one this side. You've got um, lumps and bumps and bits of uh, like uh, metal sticking all over the place. We had to, we thought it'd be nice and simple, nice few square shapes to shove it in there. Um, no, we had to make it bespoke, shape everything, cut it to shape. Um, we then realised that the two front seats didn't go far forward enough to be able for me to sleep. So to be able to get enough length in there, I, we needed to make the seats go forward. So we decided, right, how are we going to do this? Worked out that seats from Vauxhall Corsa fit into these. So we've got a Vauxhall Corsa. There's two lugs on the bottom, had to hacksaw them off, and they've got <laughs> bolted straight in. And now we've got seats that flick forwards, they go right forwards, and we can uh, set our bed up, which we'll uh, probably show you in a, in a little bit. Um, That's the secret to you fitting in here then? Yeah. I wondered that. The yeah. flip, flip yeah. You've answered seats. that question. Yeah. yeah. So it has to be seats from a three door. So they flip right. forwards and they it's go further forwards. You're not doing this. Yeah. As you're trying so to like wind it forward. Oh, so 20 minutes clever. So every yeah. time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was, that was um, the biggest sort of change we made to begin with. Yeah. Um, we decided as we were going along, you know, we had a sort of rough idea of a design. I'd made uh, some like drawings on paint, Microsoft paint. Um, <laughs> And as we went along, we decided on sort of the shapes of the cabinets and things like that. As yeah. it was, yeah, we had to decide how it was going to fit and how best to do it. And we decided to make it quite angular. You know, one side we wanted to have a little bit, a bit so it made funky. a bit more room. Yeah. The other side, straight box, just a flat front, a slightly bigger cabinet. So, um, and then from there, it was tinkering and working out how to get the best out of the space we had available. Yeah. You know, making storage right down the sides into where the wheel wells are yeah. and uh, even under the under the floor, but we're not... Uh... So we knew we wanted a, a 40 litre cooler in there as well. So the height of the bed kind of was designed around the size of the cooler and then the cooker and things like that. Where about is the cooler stored? So uh, that's around the yeah. uh, side door. So it's just in a pull-out drawer there. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty hefty. <laughs> I think it fit quite a bit in there, you know, 
we've got at the moment only a few uh, <laughs> full box. But uh, yeah, so Just we based it on that. I think um, if we're going to do it again, we'll probably go for a slightly smaller cooler. But because we're going on the rally, we're going to have quite a bit of food we want to keep uh, cool. Maybe some water if we fancy a cold drink. We don't want to have to stop every day. Um, mm. If we're in places where there is nowhere to stop as well, mm. then we don't want to have to worry about food because we're both very hungry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm hungry so. right now. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, so that was kind of important for us. So that was why the bed is at the height it's at. And then that allowed us to be able to fit the cooker in the way that we fit it. Okay. So with the cooker, the way that we have done it is so that the cooker slides out and then all of the utensils, the pots and pans and stuff, plates, all fit in this drawer underneath. Ingenious. Yeah. <laughs> So having the bed that bit higher allowed us to do that, which was nice. That's good. Yeah. So we've that's that these, side. Uh, yeah. And we've got these flip up tables, a little bit of extra surface when we're working. These amazing little cutlery cooking. holders made by Alex's mum. She's a, she's a quiltsmith. What's she, uh, what does she go by? At Quiltsmith. At Quiltsmith. <laughs> she makes uh, all these funky little things, uh, including amazing quilts, but she and just uh, threw that together for us in no time. This side we have more food storage. We tend to just yeah, put great. dry food in there. Uh, tins and stuff like that. Uh, coffee. Always has coffee. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gotta have the coffee. Yeah, one of our sponsors is a uh, supply us with coffee for the for the rally. Oh wow. Well. Uh, yeah. I saw the logo. Yeah. <laughs> Can you reach in the Yeah, sure, sorry. <laughs> then um, we wanted to be able to sit down and eat. So we've got this lovely little table. That's from another one of our sponsors, uh, Veteran Trees by Dan. He's a uh, he's an ex tree surgeon. He's now. Uh, making these fantastic bits of wood. He's also started cutting things out of slate, like incredible pieces of work yeah, out of slate. It's called carving. veteran slate. So um, <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's made this incredible table. So we can be drinking our coffees uh, from Flat Cat Coffee Company <laughs> <laughs> on our little table while sat here out the back of the car. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, so we we wanted to be able to just sit out the back and enjoy views and sit and eat dinner. And, yeah. We have um, also got a secret bit of storage <laughs> here underneath the floor. So it's a knack to getting this out. She's giving away our secrets now. No, no. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell the Iranian borders. Right. <laughs> so that comes out. And there Over you go. There. Little hidden. It was where the spare tire used to be. And that was the wheel well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, we wanted to keep some of the wheel well at least so that we could store um, spares and, and bits like that. So tools and stuff that we might need. And that just slide right in. That's um, amazing. And then underneath the boxes, we've got. You know how vans have their garage space? This is our garage space here and here. <laughs> we usually have a, an axe or a fire starting yeah, kit or some pegs. And the fire, fire um, pit goes in there and yeah, all the Brilliant. pegs and stuff that we need. So that's our Brilliant. little garage. Yeah. You've literally thought of everything. <laughs> <laughs> you say I thought of everything with a roof rack. You thought of everything in this car. We, we haven't to, told we you about the games cupboard yet. Yeah. <laughs> games cupboard? Yeah. Okay, come on. So, games cupboard. So in this one normally is like Scrabble and battleships and uh, cards and any games that we might need to keep us busy in the Stuff evening. Stuff that's vital when you're travelling across international borders from potentially hostile situations, you know. Scrabble, what else would you need? So. Yeah. yeah so. Solves everything. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. And, and then... then we have a bigger cupboard on this side, and we tend to put all our toiletries and stuff in that side. Um, Gives we've us got all the surface, little... we can potentially set a projector up or something if we fancied a movie night, you yeah. never know. <laughs> it's uh, for the future. Um, and then we have some funky little storage down here where we usually keep like towels and clothes. Bits that we don't need so often, yeah. warm and that beer, goes wet right beer. the way down. Oh, something in here. Ah, oh, tea towels. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, that goes right the way down. Um, and it's quite a decent space. We can fit quite a lot in there. Yeah. So, uh, you yeah. thought, you've literally used, ev utilized every little bit of space on this vehicle. As much as we could. Absolutely, it's, yeah. you know, it, I think taking it back to <coughs> metal actually makes them quite a decent vehicle because they're so boxy. They're like a van. They're like mm. a small van. You know, I think people can use them for like plumbing and all sorts of things. All sorts of them. So in here, that's the battery hidden in that, uh, that bit right in the center there all right yeah yeah and then uh, we usually we have a little tray that sits on top where we can sort of we try and put clothes in there separate our clothes into like dry bags um which is gonna be great for the rally we don't need many clothes like two pairs of pants maybe that should do us so. <laughs> four um, days well, run back yeah, inside out both ways absolutely if you let them air as you drive them along it's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> true rally style <laughs> well as i said we'll um we think we'll um with this amazing roof rack we'll uh, probably get a, a good old cool box Get the dirty clothes in there, a bit of water, a bit of, wash, uh, a bit of liquid, a uh, bit of, sorry, 
um, clothes, soap, uh, conditioner and whatever. Stick it on the roof rack, let it do a wash cycle, <laughs> tip out the water, fresh water in, let it do another rinse. It's got our own washing machine. I think that's incredible. That's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I must admit, guys, you've done an amazing job. And I think you've got to agree, this is just... I, when I said to you it's an amazing, <clears throat> it still astounds me, the fact that both of them can sleep in there with the door shut. They've got everything they need, you know. It's just like... My big one there, just a lot smaller. They've got everything in there that I've got in that. It's just, and I struggle to get everything in that, but they, they've done it. <laughs> they beat me hands down. I couldn't do it. I don't know how they've done it. But I, honestly, guys, this has been a pleasure doing this. It's been fantastic. And I know I said in my last video, please sponsor them. Because if you look at the side of the vehicle, there are loads of spaces available with prices. <laughs> so if you've got a business, and you'd like to sponsor this lovely couple with this car to go to um, all the way to Mongolia and back again. Get in touch now. Links will be in the description below. And trust me, they've got every intention of bringing this car back. A lot of people end up sending it back in a crate or everything. or They have every intention of bringing it back and to keep on using it when it comes back. So that, to me, is, this is going to be amazing. We've spoken about the youtube thing before i've actually given them a um action camera and i've actually put a mount on the front of the roof rack by um the light bar so i called it a reaction cam because they've had some quite sort of funny reactions to the actual <laughs> car already so when they see the roof rack as well so anyway but this if you want to sponsor them i'm going to leave all the sponsors that are already on there in a montage at the end of this video Please get in touch, please help them out. Um, and even if you've got things you can supply them with um, to help them through the rally, anything, everything will help. So please get in touch, get in touch direct or get in touch through me and help them on their way. And hopefully they will get this YouTube channel set up and they will <laughs> sort of post some videos and we get some updates, even some update photographs when they're out there. Send some pics. Oh, yeah. And I'll do a few vlogs and sort of put some pictures on the vlogs when I do them. Anyway, that's all I've got time for today. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you for this incredible <laughs> piece of work. That's awesome. Oh. That's all I've got time for now, and I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying really, really well, and most of all, staying really happy. Bye for now. Bye.